workers, and that's why I wanted to be a DO, because I wanted that tool of being able to do spinal and, and peripheral manipulation in my, in my toolbox. And, you know, thank God that the chiropractors have stood up against all of this, even though in the chiropractic profession there's, there's spraying around the edges there, too. I mean, I've heard that, that now they're in several of the chiropractic schools they're requiring vaccines for, for school admission into chiropractic school, um, which really breaks my heart. It makes me very sad. And if a lot of the chiropractors on the line didn't know that and that kind of appalls you, which I hope it does, I hope you'll go back to your alma maters and really fight that because the chiropractors have stood in the gap in terms of health care for all of us for 150 years. Dr. Tenpenny, we had a couple questions regarding silver and homeopathics um, for the swine flu. Can you address that? Well, I can, I can address it tangentially, and I, I, I'm going to say that I'm going to do it tangentially because on the FDA website, on the FDA fraud and abuse website, uh, they are going after heavy-handedly people who are making any sort of suggestions or claims about particularly neopathics and colloidal silver and any silver product to um, keep you healthy during the flu season, to do anything against the flu, and particularly anything with the swine flu. If you really want to see what the government's up to, go out to the web, go out to the FDA website under look under fraud and abuse, and look at what they're doing. They're actually actively seeking out people who are making any sorts of claims about particularly silver and homeopathics to um, to uh, boost up your immune system during this cold and flu season. So. I'm just going to leave it at that, and I think the people that are listening to this will understand why I'm not going to go any farther with that answer. Okay. Um, the the chart that was way at the beginning of the webinar, the one that gave the per, uh, percentages for each company, someone wanted to know if that was only for the United States or was it for the world as a whole internationally? Uh, as far as I know, those are just those are just purchases for the U.S. But even if those are vaccines that are being made for the rest of the world, why is the U.S. government putting so much money in their pocket to make vaccines for everybody else? Uh, wow. Well, we've got about uh, three minutes left, you know, and I want to, first of all, thank everyone for coming. But I also want to let everyone know that the webinar will be archived, you know, and it will be available uh, at um, uh, drtenpenny.com. Uh, 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 the uh, oh my, you know, all the different websites to see here, you know, at homefirst.com, you know, uh, and um, uh, a a any final thoughts? Because there's at least 50 questions more, and I'm going to invite Dr. Tenpenny to come back because she's so willingly willing to host the uh, the webinar series on vaccines, and we'll just have questions and answers. But but I I think that at least 30 or 40 of the questions um, uh, are dealing. Uh, what are we going to do? And we'll address it more in one minute. We can't address it. What are we going to do if it becomes mandatory? You know, a lot of people are looking at uh, filing injunctions, and like that, that Dr. Bill Deagle, and I like it, except the problem is, I think, uh, Sherry, they're holding off to the last second to be able to make it uh, mandatory or forced so that you can't use the court systems to really uh, do anything like this. I think that's right. I mean, people are looking for answers. What do we do if it's mandatory? Right now, quite frankly, there aren't any. There aren't any answers. Um, we don't know yet. We don't know how that's going to look. We don't know what's going to happen with that. And I think that the best shot that we have, um, no pun intended, at protecting ourselves is to get all of your neighbors involved. Go out to pandemicfluonline.com. Download some of those PDFs, those three trifolds, and the flyer that we were talking about, the truth about the flu that you can get on my website. I'm going to send it to Mayor. Nick can have it on, on, on medicalvoice.org. Um, print, I, I've printed out copies of this and gone down, gone down the street by where, where my office is and just walked in and said, hi, good morning. Here's some information I think you need to look at. Thank you very much. Turn around and walk out. It's your responsibility to sow the seed. It's not your responsibility to make the seed grow. And so everybody can do what they want with that, including throwing it in the wastebasket, but at least you've done your part. And if you can talk to your neighbors on each side and your neighbor across the street and two or three people at church and just hand out these flyers and just say, I just think this is something you guys should be aware of. 
then each community is going to have a cluster. And what might be right for my community in terms of how we and my community might decide we're not going to do mandatory vaccination might be different in your community and the next person's community. Um, there's got to be a collective energy to this. And, and right now we're in seed sowing mode because there really aren't any answers. And I, everybody's looking at you, Mayor, and looking at me like, what are we going to do? Give us the answer. We don't have an answer yet, but we're depending on all of you, all of you who are listening to this, to help make suggestions so that our collective energy can, can, um, can resist it. And at this point, it's not even about whether or not you believe in vaccines. It's about whether or not you want to retain the right to refuse and right to refuse for your children. And I think that that, because if somebody wants to get their shot, you know, have at it, go get it. But I want to stop the government at the level of my skin of what I want, want them to be able to put into my body. With that, uh, Dr. Sherry, time today, I want to thank you immensely. As always, uh, you are so interesting to listen to, frightening, uh, and I agree. I think we have to hold the 6 o'clock in the morning because that way gives us the whole day uh, uh, to recover. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you gave some incredibly excellent suggestions. We can't passively just sit in our houses and close our eyes and close our ears and lock our doors. And I think that's what we're all doing. you know. And I think the next big issue, and we're going to talk about this endlessly, can we send our children to school? I'm very blessed in our practice of over 22,000 families. More than half the families homeschool their children. That resolves part of the problem. you know. And so we'll talk about that further. Thank you. Thank you very much. And God bless you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, too, Mayor. Thank you very much.